Hey everybody, welcome back. If you guys want to see how I built drawers like they did for my Sequoia here, uh, locking slides, everything like that. In this video, I'm going to go into how I plan, how I design, and how I build these drawers with alternatives. So hopefully you guys can build your own based off of whatever your budget is. I do apologize in advance for the length. I did break it up in chapters. Hopefully you guys get something from this video. Uh, it is probably my most in-depth longest video, but I wanted to make it so that way other people kind of can see that it's not that hard to do, um, make something that looks like this. All right, let's get into it. Welcome back everybody to another video. As you see by the drawer slide that I had, I'm gonna be building some drawers for this Sequoia today. But instead of just making another video where it's me showing you exactly what I'm doing, I'm gonna go into what I do with how I plan, how I measure everything, because not everybody has a Sequoia. So everybody's build's gonna be different. Not every drawer system should be the same. Uh, everybody's needs are different. They all have different gear, different tools, different everything. Some people want to do a week long trip and they pack everything, you know, to the roof. And then there's people that just want to do a overnight trip and just have everything kind of ready to go. My personal take is I like everything kind of in drawers, ready to go. Just pack my clothes, some food, and I can get out into the mountains. It's a lot less stressful to just do that. Um, rather than planning, packing, and repacking every single time I do a trip. So I want to build drawers. Last trip I did, I just had the boxes and it works. And for a lot of people, the boxes are exactly what you need. But for my use, what I want to bring, drawers are a way to go. So I'm going to go into how I kind of plan and figure out what I want to do, how I measure and figure out the sizes. If you go down below, I actually threw together a guide, if you will, um, cheat sheet for building drawers. And it just goes over a basic two drawer system. But to me, drawers are a building block of what you can do with, uh, with a full kit, camp kitchen setup or drawers, overland drawers, whatever you want to call them. So if you go down below, download the link to a PDF free of charge. It's just a Google Drive link. So you can download that. And I go into kind of just what I think about when I'm trying to size stuff. Just big thing I see a lot of times are people build drawers just off of measurements. They do 50-50 drawers both sides or a little drawer in a fridge uh, slide. Problem is then they go to put their stuff in and it doesn't fit. So I kind of go into some of that. Um, you can see off on the side here. Um, I do cut sheets for just a case for the drawers, stuff like that. There's a lot of great drawer companies out there, um, fantastic companies, but they try to make a drawer that works for the majority. If you have specific needs and the skill set to do it, then there's nothing wrong with trying to build your own. If you've seen any of my other stuff, I try to do a lot of stuff myself. I actually use that to build up my tool supply. So I got tools, racks, tools. If what I'm building requires a tool I don't have and I do it myself, I save on just a little bit of price for material and that gives me a little extra budget that I can spend on tools. And it doesn't say you have to go buy the best of the best. You can start with basic brands. So some of the tools I'll be using, I, mean, I have a saw stop, table saw, um, router, stuff like that. You don't need any of that. If you have it, by all means use it. Um, that's why we have the tools. But you can get away with a lot of things with a drill, a circular saw, just something to cut and drill and screw. And you don't need much more. But in this video, I'll make sure to go over all that. And if I use a certain tool, I'll kind of show alternatives that you can use. So that way anybody can build it. So first thing you're going to want to do is go down below, click on that link and download the free PDF. No obligation, no email address, just download it. Um, have it for reference. Um, after that, if you look at it and you think it has a lot of information or I put a lot of time into it, just 
please give this video a thumbs up. Um, if there's at all uh, any bit of advice you get from this video or helps you at all, give it a thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. Other than that, uh, what you're gonna wanna do is grab some scratch paper. Um, I usually scribble and doodle all over paper when I'm designing things. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna actually use a whiteboard just to make it easier to see what goes through my brain as I draw this stuff and figure it out. Typically what I do first is I do a quick little doodle of just what the back area looks like where I'm gonna build it. So you got the, the wheel wells right here, um, and then you have your hatch. Just kind of draw the general shape, nothing too crazy. Um, you're just kind of using it for a visual reference. So I kind of added the seats and where the brake is just to see where, if I'm building something, where it falls, if I set one chair down or the other. So from there, you just kind of want to do basic measurements of what you got going on. I know there's more to the conceptual side of what you're going to do, but first thing you need to do is know how much space you can use. And then as you conceptualize what's going on and what you want to do, you kind of have an idea of where things are at. I mean, you can measure at the widest point, you can measure at the narrowest point, the length. Um, I will put kind of measurements of where the seats are in relation to that point. And then you do have to take into account uh, if you're building something up, if you have a seat in front of you. Now, if you have a truck and a truck bed, you don't have to worry about this, but on a SUV route, um, if you're building something, the higher you go, the less space you have. So we'll take that into account to kind of just give a, oh, okay, I want it roughly 12 inches high. Okay, at 12 inches high, what is my limiting factor? Because you'll need to know both based off of what you do on the floor. Uh, if you want to angle your setup, um, you just want to kind of try to match it a little closely, which is where I have a square for. So first thing you'll do is you'll take your measuring tape. Now I'll turn this thing so I can actually write on it. So take your measuring tape and just see what you got the widest point. So I am from plastic to plastic, 50, see 52 and a quarter. So I will write 52 and a quarter and draw my little lines so you know where they're going from. Then I'll do the same thing for the skinnier area. A big 48 and a quarter, almost 48 and a half. I will just write 48 and a quarter and do my same thing, lines. And I know just off my kind of exaggerated sketch, um, granted this is about two inches in, it's a little more exaggerated than that, but it gives me a visual of this is the narrow, this is the wide. Because of the lens, it's hard to tell, but you can see if I take my, my square here and hit, um, you kind of lose a few inches down at the floor down here. So that's kind of why I have this as a gauge for Okay, where's my limiting factor at? This is about 12 tall. So at 12, what's my limitation? I will measure kind of at the floor here. This carpet break that I have is a good spot. So I pull that to where I kind of want my setup to end, which is about right there. There is a bump right here. I kind of want to stop actually right here at this bump. So 51, and I will use the same thing when I'm going off that measurement. You could either draw it on here, you could say from there, you can say 51, uh, or if you want, I'll try to draw it on the side here, uh, draw a side profile with the seat, you know, draw a little seat thing here, and you can say down, down, 51, and then Say I wanted to go 12 tall with my setup, roughly 12 tall. Gives me a good idea of what this angle is. I don't have a protractor, that would probably be the easiest way. You could say, oh, this is a 15 degree angle and go from there. Since I don't have one, I'm gonna do it this method. So if this was a straight up shot and we will draw a nice line here and say we just do you know, 12 inches and draw your little lines and arrows, but you'll do the same thing and you'll measure to your square. My square's hitting, I kind of want it off a little bit. So I will bring the tape measure to that point. And so that same point over here is 46. So I know if I'm 12 inches tall, 
51 inch bottom, my top cannot be any narrower than, we'll just say 46. And I'm writing sideways, so I apologize. Not like I have the nicest writing anyways. And my seats, that is something I did forget. So you wanna go from this narrow point here and measure over to kind of where the seat brake is. If you're wanting that, if you're doing a one piece drawer, it doesn't matter, but I am gonna be doing a two piece setup. So I wanna know where my seat is in relationship to uh, where the drawer is gonna end based off width. So I call this the tomahawk method. So tomahawk down. So from here down, I'm at about 16 three quarter, 17. It doesn't need to be perfect. So this one I will round up to 17. And we do the same thing for the other side. Same thing at, off the narrowest point. We want to tomahawk down and I'm at about 31 and a half, which actually goes with that 16 three quarter that I saw, 31 and a half. So the next thing you wanna take into account is actually space restrictions of things you have. What is important to you to bring? What do you have that might be too large? You don't wanna go through all this effort, build your drawers, and then you find out what you wanna pack doesn't fit. I'll show you an example of what I mean. So everybody has some of these, these uh, standard one pound propane tanks. Um, so I built these truck drawers uh, with that whole thing of just using wood that was already pre-cut, one by eight, stuff like that. Built them, they turned out great. Problem is this. The way I bolted this thing down right here, uh, there's some wood and doesn't quite fit. So little things like that are why I spend so much time in the planning phase. So the building part's the easy, uh, the easy part. So taking everything into account, or if you can't accommodate certain things, find out what's most important for you. Uh, if you realize that the space you have, you can't fit in drawers, you know, prioritize what you got. Good rule of thumb is, Anything that you would use over and over, um, kind of most frequently used items, you want that to be the easiest to grab. Things like, you know, your tools, stuff like that, you're not pulling out every single time you go to camp. Hopefully not. Some people might be. But if you have, say, a example, a true drawer, two drawer system, like what I'm going to be doing, uh, my tools are kind of, I know they'll fit they're in pouches, they'll go in the back. I mean, reality is if I'm broken on the side of the road, I'm not gonna be, I don't need those things right there. Um, rarely is that an emergency. Recovery gear is a little different, but your general tools, you're not needing to rush. They could be buried a little further. Or if they don't fit in a drawer, you know, maybe tuck them under a seat, something that you don't need to open that space up for something that's more important. So those are all things to think about. What I've been using in the past, hold on. Something you guys have all seen, the Plano Sportsman boxes. So these things are great. I do love them. They stack awesome. They're tough. There's a lot of companies out there that uh, their boxes will eat away at the inside. And if you don't need all that insulation or room or for molding, it um, doesn't matter. Like this one, I have ropes, tools, tie down straps, stuff like that just kind of thrown in here. They're fantastic for that. Problem is they don't fit in drawers very well. Um, and I have to load them in, load them out. I don't like keeping these in there, but that's what I've been using and I do like them and I'll probably still use them, but they'll be supplemental for other stuff. I was able to fit all my camp kitchen stuff in one of these. One thing I don't like is it fit in here properly stacked like Tetris. So when you're kind of putting some of that stuff away, it doesn't always go back in the way that you first loaded it, it takes up space. It's kind of a pain a little bit. So what I swapped that out for is Sidio crates. So there's actually three here. So two of these are pretty much equivalent to one of my Plano boxes. Um, I got three because based off of my quick measurements I did, I knew I would be able to build a drawer around three of these. The reason why I went with these is 
say I'm out camping, but my cook setup is somewhere else or somebody else is cooking, we need to get something. Um, kind of organizing these category wise. This has my cook items, my plates, stuff like that. I'll go into that. Once I load it up, pack it for another thing, it's still in progress. But what I can do is open up my drawers, take this out, go walk over to their camp, and then when I'm done, put it right back. Um, also, because I have the Tundra as my backup vehicle, say I need to uh, load stuff up, or I go camping and somebody else is driving, and I'm just tagging along. That never happens, but just pretend. Um, I can go and stack these up, bungee them down so they don't go anywhere, and I have my whole camp set up. So these were kind of important to me as one of my measurement restrictions or requirements. Uh, so instead of just figuring, I'm gonna split these and do two 24 inch drawers and then my drawer size as it steps down, I'm actually starting with my most important thing, my most important setup, building it up from here and whatever this scales out to be for my drawer section, the adjacent drawer next to it is gonna just be the leftover residuals. So that is something important to me. So conceptually, just trying to figure out what you wanna do. I know I kinda of wanna do a two drawer setup, handle, handle, and then I'm gonna be having a fridge on the right side. And that right side, we'll get the glare, uh, that right side will go with this short seat. That way I could fold this down and I have one long platform uh, mostly for the dogs. Do, do, pointy ears, Nico, and curly tail. Another thing to take into account is your max height here and the headroom you have in your car. You don't want it, if you do have dogs that you travel with that are gonna be back there like I do, you don't want it where if you have a big dog, they're rubbing their head on everything. So I kind of took that into account to make it not that tall, so I'm not doing tall drawers to fit anything and everything. Um, I'm doing it off of these plus plus this stove. So I picked up a GSI Pinnacle stove. Um, I like it because it is very thin, um, and it is just slightly larger than one of these crates. But what I'm going to do is actually build one of my drawers where the inside is, ooh, that's close, these two stack together. So this is my minimum height. That way my stove is just tucked away. I don't have to worry about it. I like everything ready to go. So I did switch over to this. I had a larger Coleman uh, stove that I don't want to use. Best thing you can do when planning this is lay out everything you know you want to bring. Kind of situate it. A good, a good thing you can do is if you have floor space, get some masking tape. If you don't want to go outside and load it all in the car, get some masking tape, mask out the floor or something like that. Or physically go in your car, get some masking tape, figure out what you want to do just to visualize it and see if everything you want to pack can pack in that space. So that is how you kind of figure out conceptually what you want. I mean, you know if you want to do uh, stack drawers with a uh, fridge slide next to it so you can have your, uh, what is that, fridge, FR, you could do drawers, so you could do combinations of that. That all will build off the same kind of structure. You'll have to adjust a little bit from what the guide on the download link below shows. It's just so single, but the concepts of building it are all the same. It's like the building block of drawers, even a fridge slide. Uh, fridge slide, if you wanna make your own, if you don't wanna buy one, I mean, it's the same thing. You have your, uh, your drawer slide. You could build a structure for that, a wall to hook the slide on. Yeah, it won't be all slim and profile like a metal one, but DIY, sometimes that's what you gotta do. Or if you need it narrower because wood or something like that doesn't work, you can always get a piece of angle, like an aluminum angle, that gets fastened down to whatever your surface is. And then you can have your, your slide there. What do these things look like? Something like that. 
And then you can do another piece of angle, like aluminum angle, easy to cut. It's a lot thinner than say three quarter half inch plywood. So you can do that to kind of slim it up. But the concept of building these all are the same as just a standard drawer. So knowing the building block and going and just kind of creating your own based off of that, you know, that that's the best way for. And I, by all means, do your own, modify, adjust. I love doing it. Um, if I didn't believe in that, I wouldn't build all my stuff. I would just buy, you know, pre-made things. If you can personalize it to what you're using, um, it's that much better. All right, so now that we kind of conceptualized what we want to do, we know the space we need of different parameters like my stove and my crate, whether you have a Coleman propane tank that you want to fit in them, you know what your minimum heights are and width restrictions if you have any. Next is hardware. So hardware will play a role in sizing everything. You kind of need to figure out what you're using. Uh, these are 500 pound Vivor drawer slides. These are 48 inch full extension with a locking lever. These were actually the best bang for the buck. Um, not cheap, still expensive, and I needed two sets of these. So these are pricey, but they're cheaper than the others. The only thing that I noticed about these ones is they don't have the little lever quick release to pull your drawer out. So if that's important to you, these will not work. Um, I am actually going to make on mine the top section removable. So it'll be a bolt down top. That way I could pull the top off if I ever need to gain access into like the little cubby of a drawer um, with the drawer still attached. So they have this little lever here to release them and then they lock. Another more budget friendly option for drawer slides is doing what I did on the truck, which was use a one by one steel that you can kind of see over here. I just fastened it from the side into it with some self tapping screws. Um, I just have standard ball bearings on a bolt and I use some nuts to space it out. So that way it kind of, I mean, if I center this thing more, it stays centered on that, uh, on the one by one steel. And let's see if I can get a good angle. So I have these things running all the way down the sides going through. You can see early on I had to drill bit walk. So some of these were off and I had to reposition them. But I mean, this is a great alternative if you need to get a longer drawer slide. Nor my mess, but uh, so you can see, I mean, I can stand on these things. Right now it's not bolted in the back, in the back side, so it'll lift up. But I mean, I could stand in these things and they don't go anywhere. So in the example in the guide, uh, I did 28 inch drawer slides uh, and I kind of assumed non-locking. If you want budget route and you don't want to spend the money for uh, locking ones or 500 pound, there's other locking things. But you can do things like this uh, sash, window sash lock here. Uh, this one's from Ace Hardware, but every big box store has these in their window section. Uh, I can open this up. So basic window sash here. Um, do it where it goes and locks in there. So you can use these as a cheaper alternative than locking drawer slides. So this is a little more budget friendly than those right there. Another cost effective latch method um, I use for my truck, I use these hood latches. They're just kind of, you know, they're rubber. Uh, screwed on one side and then you get this little nub. So you pull it up. And you got this little nub here that it catches on. Um, these things are great, they stretch. Um, I, they got a little flexibility in it, but they do hold it in place pretty well and uh, they're nice and quiet, they don't rattle, um, being that they're rubber. So another piece of hardware besides drawer slides and or a lock is your handle selection. So these are the same ones that I had on my truck. So they're just basic spring-loaded things. These were kind of off of a, like a roadie box, uh, instrument box, stuff like that. Um, got them on Amazon and I will link everything below that I used um, and some suggestions, but these are what I use. I like them because they mount to the face and they are flush. They do not stick out. So I get the drawers a little tighter to the hatch without it interfering. So other options, more budget friendly are 
Uh, you can do either for like a tonneau cover or job box style, like the flapping lever. Uh, you can use those. The mechanism for unlatching those things is a little more complex when you're kind of doing it where it is the actual lock and unlock for the drawers. Uh, what is nice about those is you can actually lock them. So if you're truck bed situation, you can just lock those little flapping handles. So another option is uh, one of these little T handles. The lock you can do, it has a little lever arm, so this thing turns, and you can use it to open your drawer. And it gives you a nice pull handle. So problem is they stick out kind of far. Uh, these were one of the concept ones I got for the truck and never used it. So it is now in the pile of parts. More budget friendly option is two different things. You can use just standard drawer pulls, uh, cabinet drawer pulls, um, hundreds of options online for those. There's the basic ones that have four screws. I'll actually put a picture here. It's what I used in the Forerunner when I had that. It worked well, they're just basic drawer pulls. And then the cheapest option is just drill a hole in it for your fingers to go in and pull the drawer out. So that's the cheapest, just cut a hole for your hand to go in. And, but yeah, those are your options. Um, reason why I say hardware is important to kind of know, not necessarily exactly like the, the drawer length you're gonna use just yet, but you need to know roughly which one because they have like drawer slides they have and uh, they're typically like 100 pound, 250 and 500 pound. These are the 500, some 250s are, I wanna say some 250s are half inch thick and some are three quarter, the 500 are three quarter, 100 pounds are about a half inch. Whenever you go to buy these things, if you look at the pictures, they usually have the dimensions. This is a three inch tall by three quarter inch thick. I was gonna go with some cheaper ones to cut some costs. Problem was they were half inch. And if, since I'm so critical on my drawer inside dimensions, I didn't wanna base it off of a half inch and then say they broke or they couldn't hold up and I had to step it up to a three quarter inch thick one. My worry was I'd have to rebuild the entire thing because if I'm working my way out, I can't bring my drawer in narrower or else my crates wouldn't fit. So then that means if my drawer was a set distance where I kept the same drawer, I'd have to build a new case on the outside. And if I have two side by side and one gets bigger, now the other one will, if I didn't build enough room in my car where I can just slide it over, I just didn't want to do that. So I picked up the most budget version of 500 pound slides that I could. And those are linked down below. So, uh, they got good reviews. The only thing was if you can't unlock um, them and that's fine for me, release them, not lock them. So it does have a lock. It is a single sided. So the other slide, the other slide here does not have a lever. So which is fine by me. Um, cause I can just flip this down, grab the handle, pull, and I'd be good. All right, so now I know my concept of what I wanna do, my space restrictions. Conceptually, I know my size is here of what I wanna do. Um, I am going to kind of figure out what my dimensions I need for my cut sizes. And there is a full breakdown in all the math involved using my spacing. So what I'm gonna do, what you kind of have for a, a drawer structure is you have your case, you have your drawer slide, and then you have your drawer inside of it. So you need to know what your material thickness is for the case. For mine, I am using three quarter inch plywood for everything. Reason being, I could put stuff on here I know it's not gonna fall apart on me. Uh, my drawer slides, like we talked about, is another three quarter inch wide um, that I need to take into account. And what I'm gonna do for the drawer, so there's multiple ways to do this. To try to keep this thing as low profile as I can, uh, I'm gonna do half inch for the bottom. A uh, standard kitchen drawer uses like quarter inch plywood uh, for the bottom. I'm going to use a half inch. And then for the sides here, I 
only because it's easier to fasten to without blowing through one of the sides with a nail or a screw or something like that is I'm gonna go for the sides and the back of my drawer, I'm gonna go with three quarter inch. That way, if I'm fastening with that big drawer slide that I have, if I'm fasten, uh, fastening to from three quarter inch to three quarter inch, whether I bolt through or screw in, I know it has a little more meat behind it. A uh, half inch, it, I guarantee it's gonna be uh, big enough for the majority. But for me, for mine, I'm doing three quarter inch. Uh, just building it once, I'm actually gonna be using some one by material, uh, common board for that. And um, there's a reason I'll go into it in a bit. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna do uh, the drawer sides as three, three quarter and the drawer bottom is half. So this will be for three quarter will be for all the, if my pin worked, all the sides. Only thing half inch is this bottom part of the drawer. So that gives me my measurements I can go off of to figure out what my widths are and what my clearances are. And the same thing goes for the front to back. So I know my my crates I wanna do, they are 18 and a half inches wide. So I wanna fit three, three of them in a configuration like this. And I know my, my crates are 18 and a half. We'll do 0.5, change it up here. So 18.5. Now, I don't wanna build my interior of my drawer exactly at 18.5 because it's gonna be a tight squeeze. I'm gonna give it a half inch. So I'm gonna make the inside of my drawer at 19 right here. So from there, I know 19 plus three quarter plus three quarter plus three quarter. So that's an uh, inch and a half, two and a quarter. Um, so both sides is two and a quarter over here between those three, and then same thing here, two and a quarter. So it's 19 plus four and a half inches, which gives us 23 and a half. So figure out what your thing is. If you did it opposite now, say you did 24 inch wide drawer, you know what your material thickness is. So you can go 24 minus two and a quarter worth of material on both sides, which is four and a half, it would be 19 and a half inches inside clear drawer width. So depending on which way you go, you can go um, inside out or outside in. Now the length kind of do a similar thing. Erase those. So the way I'm doing my drawers is going to be a split here uh, and then I'm actually going to do them basically straight like this. So that 48 and a quarter, I'm doing the 48 just to give me um, clearance here. I am planning to do a uh, second battery in this corner. And then I'm going to have a fridge right here. And this will kind of be built up as like a little electrical enclosure. So I want as much room on the back side, And this is going to be the drawer that comes out and it will have my three crates in it. I'm making this, ooh, making this drawer only as deep as I need to. Um, that way I can have some more space back here for the battery. This one on this side, the drawer insert, I'm using the same drawer slides for both, they're both 40 inch, but this side is gonna be as most as I can. So this one will actually be a little longer than this side over here. So I need to take that into account when I'm cutting my stuff in making the drawers. Basically how I'm gonna be building my drawers, um, we kind of know from the bottom, I'm gonna do the half inch. I'm actually gonna screw upwards and I'll go into that a little more. I'm going to have two parallel sides the ends will be to the inside. There'll be something fastened to the bottom coming up. And then I'm gonna have my drawer face up front. So now I need to figure out my sizing here. And all this is gonna be three quarter inch like I talked about before. So I know all my three drawers. If I put these things next to each other from here to here, 
I am 37 and three quarters. So to give, a, again, just a little bit of tolerance and wiggle room in there, I'm gonna go up a half inch. So I want my inside here, from here to here, to be 38 and a quarter. Can't, let's fix that. Oh, that's ugly. Let's try that again. So 38 and one quarter. Inside for the length. And then I know this is, uh, again, three quarter. Same with this, uh, three quarter. So which means these side pieces are going to be, was that 38 and a quarter to that is 39, 39 and three quarters from, for this side piece here. So that's going to be 39, three quarter. And you always want to keep a cut, cut list as you figure out your lengths and stuff like that. All right, let's kind of fix that light right there. Sorry about that. So that kind of gives you your length there. And if you're to look at mine from the side profile, so I've talked in other videos of, of Nico, he gets car sick, he throws up a lot. And if you're to look at this at, from a side profile, let's see if I can do this. So if that's the bottom, um, what I want to do is have the top come and then we have our angle for where the seat is. I want my drawer, and this is different than my example in the guide I did, but I want my drawer to be, if I can get this to go, underneath the top. So there'll be a little, there'll be a little overhang right here. And that way, if Nico throws up, it does not go into my drawer. So there was thought behind that one. So I'm having it kind of recess and go in there and then my handle will be there. So, and then you have your, kind of what we went over here. We know our total length of these sides was, I didn't write it down, 39 and three quarters for the length of this side. So this will come back. You have your kind of your side and your front and back here. But we know this is uh, I'm gonna have a thir three quarter inch drawer face, and then this is 39 and three quarters long. And then I want a half inch right here before I put a divider. So that way I have some space. I'm gonna kind of build a enclosure that goes up and over. So all this will be electrical for my second battery setup. But, so that's why I wanna keep this thing as tight as possible on this side. So I want a, a half inch here. Uh, so I kind of know my, my dimensions here. 39 three quarter plus three quarter inch for this drawer face to get it to flush there. Uh, that would give me 40 and a half plus another half is 41 inches before is kind of where I'll put this divider piece here. And that's all later stuff that doesn't change any cut lengths of any kind. So, but that's just good to know um, because I know what my bottom is and I know what my top is gonna be based off of these length restrictions here. Um, and then I'm also, because I mentioned, I'm gonna make a removable top on these things. So kind of like uh, if you ever seen kitchen drawers, they have a little piece that spans across here and I am going to be able to bolt this thing down in multiple places. So that is so I can remove the top if I ever need access back in this little cubby back here. Uh, I know this is kind of a lot of rough doodling. If you look at that guy that I, that I put down below, it kind of does this in a little cleaner way through CAD. So that's kind of how you start putting your numbers together, how I got my numbers. That guy that I put down below, I made it kind of in the form of a cheat sheet. So I gave an example with dimensions and I put what the breakdown is, but I have actual CAD pictures so that 
give the tolerances, breakdowns off material. You can always adjust it based off what you're using, what material thickness is you're using, and go from there. It's just kind of a basic building block for a drawer system. So kind of modify it however you want, whatever fits your needs, by all means, I encourage it. So there is one last component. Apologize for all the talking, and I know this is gonna be a long video, but I kind of want to help anybody and everybody build drawer systems if they're wanting to. I know there's a lot of guides out there for complex things. Some people might get intimidated by that and go, oh, this is in over my head. I'm trying to simplify it. So as I build it, kind of other people can go from there and, and uh, if they want to get their feet wet in building their own stuff. Well, the last thing I just want to go over before we actually get to the building portion is actually aesthetics or appearance type stuff. I'm not a fan of just plain plywood looking drawers it looks very diy and if i can get away from not looking diy i do it's not much more effort to make it look a little nicer you know people see it and they they you know oh you built that and it, it's nice when you get that little appreciation um one just that you built it and then two that it looks nice it doesn't look like you just slap plywood together which is i mean ultimately what we're doing but Try to hide that a little bit. I typically do on my Forerunner, I did this. On the Tundra, I did this as you saw earlier. And then what I plan to do again is I have all this charcoal gray carpet. Now this is just speaker carpet. And I actually use this 3M Super 77 to just you spray it on, put this stuff on, it sticks. Never had a problem with it peeling from the heat or anything like that. But carpet gives it that nice look, especially since the dogs are on it. Uh, they can just kind of go on here. It's a little more comfortable. So another thing I like to do is stain the wood if I can. It's really easy. On the truck, what I did was I used Minwax or a Verathane uh, stain. I think it's Verathane Kona is what I used on there. I put on a just a water-based poly. This is the Verathane. Three times faster, triple coat. So um, this is just a thicker one. I'm, I am lazy with uh, some of that stuff, so just if I could do less coats, I prefer to. Sanding and painting will be the death of me one day. Less effort I can do, but this helps protect it. They are camp drawer, so if something spills, gets in there, comes up, it is easy to clean up. So I do recommend that. It doesn't soak into the wood. This is just a standard pre-stain. Pre-stain, basically, you put on first, and the stain color you choose just more consistent look across it it's not spotty sometimes you'll do it and there'll be like little darker spots where it absorbs into the wood a little bit more uh, this is just makes a more even coat of color what i'm going to do for these ones again my uh, hatred for painting staining stuff like that uh, i found from bear a water-based stain and polyurethane so this is all in one I do have to do two coats for it, but I don't, it, it, you stain it and it protects it all in one. I don't know how well it works, but it's better than just plain wood. So we'll see. That's just what I'm going to go with on this build. With the gray carpet, and this is an espresso, kind of gives it a nice look. If you are building out of plywood and staining it, if, uh, so if you know on plywood, there's multiple layers, plies. Say you want to stain it, but you don't want that visible if you have one of your cut ends expose and you want it to look a little nicer this is actually what i did for cabinets i'm building in the back my garage cabinets there uh, but i actually used veneer edging so what you do if you paint it it doesn't really matter which uh, type you got this is yeah this is just a birch veneer here uh, if you stain it you want to try to get the veneer that matches your wood that you're getting that way the stains look the same kind of hides it gives it that like hardwood kind of look makes it look a little prettier uh, and all you do on this it's easy you just get an iron don't use your wife or girlfriend's iron um, or your mom's i guess i went to walmart and i got the cheapest iron i could and now it's a dedicated garage iron um, i don't care because if it gets glue on it because uh, as you do it one side of these is a wood the other side is a glue finish. All you do is you heat it up on the edge, come back and sand it down. They do have veneer edging trimmers. They can kind of cut the edge, but then just hit it with some sandpaper and it makes the edges look a lot nicer. So 
Those are the aesthetics. Now it's time to build. All right, so as you get your things marked out and ready to cut, uh, you know, I have a full four by eight sheet of plywood here. It's hard to maneuver to get it on a table saw. So while I do have it, it does make a lot of cuts easier. Until you get down to more manageable pieces, it's kind of, it's not as convenient. So I do like to cut it on a table. Uh, I did have in the back, you see on my saw horses, I had kind of a two by four frame that I can just cut through the two by four and not worry about it. Um, I'm trying something different. Uh, you saw I loaded up a inch and a half foam board. So I have seen a lot of people, I haven't tried it yet, but I've seen a lot of people do that as a thing. I can just sit on my workbench, cut right through it, just go a little past where the wood is with the saw. And I don't worry about it cutting into the foam board and I can use it multiple times. If it gets too trashed after a while, I can throw it away and get another one. So my workbench, my rolling workbench I have here is a four by eight. It fits everything. I don't have to worry about supporting both ends when I'm cutting. I used to do that where I just stack it on two by fours on the ground, cut on the ground. If you had one heavy side, it falls and it splinters and cracks. So this is nice you can just cut right through it. You don't have to worry about the piece falling off. So while I do have a table saw for some of the cuts, most of the cuts I do, I just, I mean, if I just use a circular saw, that is pretty much the, my go-to. Um, it's easy, it's quick. This one here is the light I have Makita for most of my tools. Doesn't matter what you use. Get a Ryobi, Ryobi, Ryobi. Only people that call it Ryobi is the actual company. Everyone else calls it Ryobi, but I have a lot of Ryobi tools and they're great. Um, so there's nothing wrong. Start with wherever your budget allows. Go to, uh, I know Walmart has some of their own brand stuff. If it gets you to build your own stuff, great. You know, one thing to do if you're getting a more budget friendly tool is invest in a better blade. Um, that'll make your cuts look a lot better. That is one way to have a more professional appearance with lower budget tools. It'll only cut as good as your blade is. So another cutting option to have is a jigsaw. Um, again, Makita. So you can use these. It's a little harder to, for straight lines on long runs. Yeah, you can use, you know, obviously use a guide to keep your run straight but it's a lot easier to make a hook and turn and kind of hook into your material compared to this. It's a lot harder to make a quick jab at it. So your lines look a lot straighter. A few ways to get long straight cuts is what I actually use, especially to rip down full sheets of wood, uh, make them more manageable sizes, is I use the Craig, I think this one's called the AccuGlide. So you set your saw in here, it mounts in, this location, you set your width and you basically put it against your edge and you run down and this follows parallel. Yeah, it can hook a little bit, but I haven't had any problems with that. So that is one method. Uh, they also make one for doing like cross cuts like on a four foot plane. So you can do that. I don't own that. I actually just have a piece of angle that is, what is it? Five feet long. Um, and what I do is you see just aluminum angle, I clamp it down and then I can run my saw against this as a guide. Same, and you can do the same thing with a jigsaw, run it along here, follow it like a guide. The more pricey option I would love to have is a track saw. Uh, so it has the track on it, it's mounted on it, you set it down, you cut it. I want one, I don't have one. Um, that's another option. So I'll link to all these tools that I use, some budget friendly options, um, just to kind of give some variety of things. Um, but that's usually what I use for my, the majority of my cuts. So now I went through and I got my, my cut pieces I need. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna do the main base out of three quarter inch plywood. This is just that basic sandy, sanded, whatever it's called, uh, three quarter inch plywood. I'm gonna use that for the case. And then for the drawers, I have half inch plywood for the bottom. And you can see behind me, 
that I have some one by tens. I actually have a lot of scrap wood too. So I have piles and piles of scrap wood because I never throw anything away. Um, so I'm gonna try to use what I can, but I do like the one by 10 because you don't have those side plies and my, my drawer inserts are gonna be stained and I didn't want that plywood look. It's easier to just cut a one by 10. Plus with the price of wood, you just, right now you just kind of make stuff work with what you got and I didn't want to buy a whole new sheet of plywood and I didn't want to do one out three quarter one out of uh, the one by ten um, so I'm going to get the one by tens I'm going to cut them down to size that I need so three quarter inch plywood is pretty dang close close enough for me anyways to three quarter inch uh, it's <laughs> It might be a 16th under, but it's fairly close to what it is. Uh, the one by tens that I plan to use, they are actually three quarter inch by nine and a quarter uh, is the width. Similar to a two by four is not two inches by four inches. They mill it down and it's a smaller size. So same thing goes for the one by 10. Plywood is a little different, but that's kind of what I'm gonna use for material for this build. All right, I think it's time to get some lines on here and start making some cuts and uh, getting this thing together. All right. So these pieces here, these are the cut down one by tens, cut them down to eight inches tall for my drawer height. Figured I'd share a couple tips that I know. First tip is just cut off the end from, if it's the factory or however, whatever you say, um, cut here, just cut it off, give it a nice clean 90 degree cut because you don't even know if that's 90 degrees. Um, another one is, you know, when doing cut like this, um, yeah, you could freehand it, but if you want a nice straight 90 degree cut, you can use a square like this or, or even a smaller one like this. I use this on like two by fours and stuff like that, but since this thing is eight inches long, I can take this here and run my, uh, run my saw against it just like a guide and you don't really have to clamp it or anything. It just stays put. So say I wanted to do a nice do on the edge nice fresh cut I can just go and give it a nice cut I can measure down 38 and a quarter take my square put my saw on that mark make sure your blade is on the right side of the line that it needs to be for your cut and measure. Now I have a nice 90 degree cut and that took no time at all. So that is one tip for quick cuts on wood. So I do that for two by fours and stuff like that when I'm just ripping down real quick. I just throw this thing on it and go from there. All right, so because of the third row latching, um, normally what I would do is at the bottom of the case, I would have one sheet of plywood um, that you can get screws all along the bottom, helps. 
but because of these, they do stick up a little. So I'm gonna kind of do an open bottom. So it'll right across the top here. I'll get some screws on the sides. Uh, I'm hoping that's enough. If not, I might need to add more or add some gusseting, but um, it's just the easiest way rather than get a whole sheet of three quarter inch plywood just to cut a couple holes in it. So I'm gonna go with this route. If it doesn't work, then I will make a change. All right, we got all of our cuts done. Um, we have the wider case, uh, top and the bottom, the narrower case, that'll be where the fridge and, um, and the battery enclosure will go later. I don't need to build the battery enclosure right now. Uh, then we have our two drawers, the different, uh, different lengths and widths, as well as the drawer bottoms. Uh, now's the fun part, starting to put it together and seeing it come to life. All right, so I kind of started mocking this thing up and set it up. This is all loose, it's just balancing here. Um, I wanted to see what it looked like. I'm actually going to lay these pieces down, sand anything that's exposed. Uh, I did want to certain things stain even on the case because it's gonna be visible from exterior. Uh, so I, I'll go through and do that. And then, uh, so first step is sanding it and then I'm gonna stain it loose. I think that'll be a little easier. Uh, and then I can always touch up if I had to. Yeah, so I got a lot of sanding to do. Might as well just get it all done with and that way everything's ready to go. All right, I'm not a fan of sanding. <laughs> So I did go ahead and I went through and stained the sides and the back pieces of the case uh, with that stain plus poly. It does need another coat on it, so the first coat's on and drying. I did, as you saw, go through and carpet the bits that are gonna be kind of exposed. Normally I would assemble this thing and you know glue it, uh, screw it, stuff like that, then carpet it. It would have been too hard to carpet and make it look nice um, after the fact, once it was assembled and then stained. If I got carpet, it, it was just easier this way. I do need to put on a second coat before I start assembling the case. So what I'm actually gonna do is shift gears to the drawer insert portion and assemble that. And once I get that assembled, then I'll stain that after, but that's gonna be glued and fastened. Um, and then by the time I get that thing assembled, this will be ready for its next coat. So I'll kind of do a little bit of jumping, jumping back and forth for that. So we'll see if I can kind of shift this stuff over to the side without it falling off and get this next part assembled. All right. All right, so these are the drawer sides for my shorter drawer that's gonna have the city oak crates in them. Uh, what I'm actually gonna do is incorporate this thing recessed into the sides. Uh, this is the front face and the sides are actually gonna stand upright on both sides of this thing. As you can see, the stove is a little wider. So when you, I guess I could situate this thing. So as you can see, the stove is just a little wider than what the inside's gonna be. So I'm gonna actually copy the profile of this thing. You can see it's kinda Skinny, but it has some angled edges. I'm gonna trace the profile on this on the inside and route it out, not all the way through. I want it just wide enough that there's gonna probably only be like a quarter or an eighth inch of space on here. I'm gonna to try to keep that. Um, that way the sink's locked in, it doesn't slide around. If it opens up, it can just go this way and then fall or something. So I kind of want to lock it in where it can't go left and right any, and then it'll fall into spot and kind of lock in there. Even if I have the crate out, it'll have its little spot. So I'm going to try to do that that way. I don't have to tie this thing down. It just, 
it's in there, it has its spot. So I'm gonna to try to figure out how to do that. I thought it was gonna fit. All right, that fits exactly how I wanted it. Uh, I'm just gonna clean up with sandpaper a little bit more. Then this thing's ready to fasten together. And once that's all done, I can stain this thing. It's starting to rain. Hopefully I can film this without getting too loud. Rain seemed to stop for a second. Uh, so I'll try to talk as fast as I can. I'm gonna be putting the drawer insert portion together. Um, lots of different ways to do it, lots of different fastening techniques that you can do. Uh, I'm going to use a combination of normal, normal wood screws along with the Craig jig. Um, if you don't know what the Craig jig is, it's just a pocket hole, kind of conceals holes a little bit more. I'm going to use those when these things, these ends stand up. I'm going to do pocket holes to the inside and then screw towards the outer edge of it. Once I get all those on, I'm gonna actually screw this down, or I guess it'd be from the underside down. It's not the best way to do it. Um, I'm gonna actually use more screws than I normally would for that. It was just easier on the design I wanted and staying with half inch, I didn't wanna to have to screw into the side and I only have really a quarter, in, not even a quarter inch of meat in there. Um, so I wanted this just this gonna actually sit right on top of here and I'll be screwing up from the bottom. So I'll be using these pocket holes along with a new tool that I got uh, from Craig. It's kind of a, just for a straight countersink. Um, they kind of switch and nice little tool. Never seen it before, so I picked it up. I'm actually gonna use the Craig screws on the bottom side as well. Uh, you can use just standard construction screws or something like that as well. And again, I'm going to be using um, more screws than normal just because it's the weight's pushing down on that bottom drawer. And if the screws are up, it's easy for a screw to pull out. So the more you add, the little better. If you're screwing from the side, now you're trying to shear the screw off. So that's why that's a preferred way. I'm just not doing it. Another method of doing it, if you had the room, um, if you hear the thunder. Uh, another method is you can cut a dado into the bottom. Um, you could probably actually get away with quarter inch plywood uh, if you want, or MDF, that if you wanted your drawer bottom to be that and just cut that quarter inch slot there, that would honestly probably be strong enough as well uh, because I'm trying to keep everything low profile. When you cut a dado, which is basically a groove in there for it to slide into, um, you don't even have to really fasten it. You just put wood glue in the slot, slide it through, and it kind of locks it in. By doing that, you need some material on the underside, and this is upside down. So you need some material, then your slot, so it still takes up at least a half inch, probably more. Other ways that you can do is using nail guns. So if you have an air compressor, uh, I actually like this rigid brad nailer a lot. Um, if you don't have an air compressor, another thing to do is just get one of the Ryobi battery powered um, nail guns. So this is a larger one. Um, I have a brad nailer that's in the house, but I have a couple of these things. It's just a little easier sometimes, just throw a battery on, you don't have to worry about the air compressor. Those are multiple methods you can use to fasten. Regardless of what you use, I recommend some wood glue. I'm using the Gorilla Glue. There's a lot of different kinds. Um, I heard Gorilla Glue dries clear. I'm not sure. I'm sure everyone has their preference, uh, but that's what I'm using. So every, every seam that I screw, I will throw wood glue on there first, just because that's a lot stronger. Um, especially in the bottom that going around the whole perimeter that'll 
definitely add some more strength to it. But those are just different fasting methods. Uh, if you use normal screws and you want it to look a little nicer, you can get like a, get a countersink kit like this and you can make your screws a little more flush to the wood. Yeah, that's the fastening method. So I'll kind of show just how I do it and uh, we'll start getting these drawer inserts together. All right, that should be it. And let's start putting this thing together. All right, when you put this thing together, having some kind of clamps, um, I got these little 90 degree clamps that I was using earlier, along with some speed squares. Uh, having some kind of square um, is nice to do. Uh, make sure your drawer is actually not, you know, crooked. And then when I kind of start putting it together, I'm going to lay the sheet of plywood on top, just to make sure, because I do know the plywood is square. So I can actually use that as a guide when I'm setting this thing up and then start putting it together. The pocket holes are gonna be concealed. Um, one will be on the back side of the drawer that you'll never see. So that'll be like looking into the back of the drawer. And then the other one is going to be up front, but forward facing and the drawer face is gonna be on top of this. So you'll never even see them from the side. So we got the front here because of the stove. So this thing will end up being on the back side like this. Like I said, you won't see the screws from inside the drawer. Clamp it together. I'll get actually do the same thing to the other side and then I'll make the two L's together. So move that to the side. Kind of rest on that thing like a table. Just kind of holds everything together. Make sure that sits up, that's all flush. Edges are straight. That kind of gets our side walls done. We could take our bar clamp off here. Do the exact same steps, get the second drawer insert built, and then that way I can kind of sand and start staining this. And then while it as it's drying from the stain, then I can jump back to the case, start fastening that thing together. Uh, once those things are together, it's just putting the drawer slide in, and I still have to build the drawer face. I will see you when I get the other one done, and I kind of start putting together the case. As you can see, I got the second box built and stained. Uh, it has one coat on the stain, so I need to kind of let this dry. I'll flip it over and do a second coat. While that's drying, I'm gonna actually start building the case assembly. So I have my sides, my back piece. These are the two bottom pieces that we said we we're gonna, instead of doing one solid piece on the bottom because of the latches for my third row seat, I'm gonna split it and do this. And these are my stringers that are going to go across the top that I will have to drill and do. I have some threaded inserts that I'll do. 
That way I can have the top removable. Uh, without screws, there'll be actual bolt going through there holding this thing down. You kind of see, uh, I was trying that stain out. I'm not too thrilled with it, to be honest. It is easier, less steps, but it's a lot less forgiving than other stains I've used. Now, let's see if you can see on here, there's, it's easy to get brush strokes on here. If you use a brush, if you use a rag, um, it was easier to switch to the rag on those, mostly because of how big it was. But, you know, if you go slightly against the grain, it shows the markings a lot easier, just drip edges. It dries really fast, and that could be part of the problem. Yeah, just less forgiving than other stains I've used. I probably wouldn't recommend it. Um, I'm already in too deep, but uh, just, my advice, go with the standard like a Verathane or a Minwax stain and then a polyurethane after the fact. these little let's see threaded inserts here that will screw in and then that way um, the top could be removable I use these same things for my fridge slide as well to bolt that thing down before I went ahead and put the drawer slides in and mounted the drawers, I just wanted to make sure it fit. So it looks like we fit pretty good with exactly where we were hoping for. I'm gonna get the drawer inserts in on the slides mounted, and then I'm gonna work on the top, and then the last step is gonna be the drawer faces. And then that's pretty much it. But I'm excited to get the drawers in, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so for the drawer slides, to make sure everything's running parallel um, with each other, what you wanna do is you wanna pick up couple spacers or of some kind that are the same height. If you set dimension, cut them to the right height that you want. What you want to do is you want to place them on the bottom on both sides. And then you want to take your, your drawer slide that you have and feed it into position and set it on that spacer. And how you want to position these things is flush with the front here and use some kind of fasteners, whatever. A lot of times they come with hardware. Mine came with little short machine screws um, that wouldn't work for my application. So I just picked up some three quarter inch long number eight counter sunk head screws and I'm gonna use those. I did test fit them. They do clear the slide, which is important. You wanna make sure that when you put them on, it doesn't catch on here. So what we're gonna do is Pull this out and find your very first mounting hole here. You're gonna go ahead and take one of your screws, double check your flush. Put that on, holds it in place, double check. All good. And then just kind of mount these along the way where there's mounting holes. You don't have to do all of them, but enough that it holds it. So this one here, you can see has a little access hole. That way you can get to that front screw. Let me go ahead and put that one in. From there, you should be able to take out your spacers. So what you can do is kind of move this access hole and find your other locations up front. So you'll do the same thing to the other side and then we'll get the drawer in. So now to get the drawer insert lined up and set correctly, uh, you'll wanna grab some kind of spacer for the underside of the drawer. So what we kind of do is put that in, put the drawer on top of that spacer. That way front to back, it's the same. And then what you do is you'll pull these out a little bit and keep it flush with the front face of your drawer. And then you'll do the same thing, put screws in it just a little bit ways out. Then once you get those front screws in, pull it out further while it's still on the spacer and that'll kind of keep the, the back end up. And then you'll follow along and do the screws just what you did with the case side. Pull it out to the first screw hole here. Get that flush. 
So you get your first screw hole here. With it on the spacer. Get that screw in on both sides. Pull it out. Some more screws on it. Take out your spacers. Let's go ahead and get the other one done. Nice. Perfect. So now what I'm really gonna do is get the tops on here, kind of see where they sit and mark and drill where I want my holes to bolt down into here. Take it off, put the inserts in, that way I can use the bolts. After that, I'll get in the car and then I just have to do drawer faces. And you can opt to have this be where your drawer face is and you don't have, you know, you put your handle directly on here. I'm just going for a different look. So you can go ahead and do that if you wanted to. Once I get it in the car and set this where it's gonna be, I am gonna throw a screw in here just to hold the two boxes together so they don't slide around. Um, but for now, I will go ahead and start getting the tops on. I will have to mark in, drill some holes and do some things and carpet them, um, which is why I haven't carpeted yet, just so I can mark the holes where I want them and make them look a little lined up. Because of that, that's why I lined up uh, these two stringers. This one has to be offset because of this back piece, but that's okay. I will, I'll just have these two forward and these two back here, but then everything else will line up. Pretty solid. Uh, now the other one I just had to notch that way. Fits better with this seat up here. Opens pretty smooth. However, latches and came and grab it to try to pull it without unlatching it. But uh, yeah, just have to do the other one now. Almost there. It's going nowhere. So this area right here is gonna be reserved for a second battery. It'll be built up in kind of an enclosure that goes up higher. That'll kind of go along with my fridge there, but I did stop this piece right here. That way when I drop it down, I can do a continuing dog platform. Um, but for now, that's kind of gives me a little cubby space there for more electrical stuff. But yeah, so that's why I notched that. All right, so what you're going to want to do is make sure you get some pieces that are cut undersized that will fit in here. I left about a quarter inch gap in between. Um, that and you kind of go in after the fact and you center this thing up that way it looks nice and straight when you go and shut it. Now what you want to make sure you do though if you have these locking levers is to ah, get rid of those. If you have these locking levers here, what you want to make sure to do is cut a notch in it. So one way to do it to your size, kind of go here, make a mark, push it down, make a mark on the underside. That's how you know how much clearance you need. Um, and then after that, whatever handle you use, you just want to find the center point of it. And from there, go out whatever it is. So I'm using these flush ones that we showed before. I'll go in the center. 
So when you go and do that and kind of make a notch, you can also just cut it straight and do a little 90 here. A lot of people do that. It's a lot easier. Uh, what I did, I got one right here. I actually, I made my marks and I took a hole saw, three quarter inch hole saw and I drilled that hole. That way it kind of made a nice rounded hole there. And I already cut my hole for my drawer. So that will basically sit right there. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere in there. And that gives me my wiggle room to go down. So all I have to do is now do the same thing to this side for that drawer and carpet it. So once you do all that, it kind of looks like this. All right, I only have a couple things left to do on these drawers to get them ready to go where I can start loading them up. Um, one thing I'm gonna do is pull this out. I'm gonna put one of those threaded inserts on one side here. That way I can put a bolt through here and just kind of hold these two together so they're one unit. I'm gonna do probably one in the front and then one towards the back that's accessible. So I have to take the top off for that. Uh, before I do that, I'm actually going to mark where my fridge slide's gonna go. Uh, this is my new ice co that I got. I downsized from my Dometic. Uh, but I'm gonna mark the holes on here and do the same thing with the threaded inserts. Uh, that way the sink can unbolt and I can take it out if I wanted to. I got it pretty much situated where I want. Um, gonna do flush on the side over here and just a little bit off so I'm not on top of this bolt. Um, that should give me Plenty of room in the back side for all my dual battery setup that I want to do. Ugh. So if you're able to see, uh, I'm going to do the, the bolt back here, but this gives me plenty of room. I'm going to do an enclosure that basically comes, uh, it's going to follow this line, come up, and then go straight across. I'm going to try to keep it the same height as this if I can. I have to lay out all my 12 volt stuff and make sure I can fit it in that space. So it'll utilize a cubby here for the battery and then down here with, with all my fuse boxes, circuit breakers, stuff like that. Uh, and then I'll eventually build off of here for a dog platform. I was gonna do it level, but just to give my dogs a little bit more room, I think I am gonna step it down and then do some under storage. This seat itself is just held on by four bolts, so it's it takes no time at all to pull out uh, and put back in if I had to. But yeah, so I'm gonna get the tops taken off this Throw on those threaded inserts and we'll be pretty much ready to go with this thing. All right, let's go do that. All right, that about does it for my drawers. I got them loaded up with my stuff. I got the stove in here, which fits awesome. I'm happy about that. Along with my Sidio crates, which I can just go and pull out as I need them. Then back in. Other than strapping down my fridge and working on the dual battery setup that I have. Um, that about wraps it up for this. I know it was a long video, but I do hope that some of it was informative. If you never built drawers, if you kind of want to know how, how my mind works when I'm trying to design these things. This is my third set of drawers. I did one in my Forerunner, did one in my Tundra, and then I did this. All different styles, different budgets. Figured on this one, I would just go ahead and do the locking slides. Compared to the Forerunner, I just had standard kitchen drawer slides. And the Tundra, as you saw, I just have the ball bearing on the, the one by one steel, uh, which works great. Uh, but I wanted something that locked. Figured I'd just go with a more sleek, low profile. Uh, when the hatch does shut, leaves a nice closer gap here. Uh, that way the dogs don't slip a paw through and hurt themselves. I'm going to do something on the sides and maybe trim it to get a little tighter, uh, maybe just a border, just so, again, the dogs don't hurt themselves while they're in here. If you stuck around for this long, I do appreciate it. Um, it. This was a long video. Hopefully it had some value with what you're looking for. I'll try to read all the comments and answer any questions you guys have. If you guys have any other thoughts on what you want to use, or just tell me how you've built yours if you have. Um, or if you bought yours, which brand did you go with? Like I said before, there's great products out there. Um, I just happen to enjoy building my own and I could personalize it for exactly what I want. Example, the stove. So can't really get that buying off the shelf. 
I do appreciate the watch, and if you haven't already, subscribe. There's going to be plenty more build videos and just, you know, overland vlogs and stuff like that that I plan to do. Thank you again, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.